Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pixelated Doll Follow. thanks for stopping by and we are back playing Third Age Total War and this is the great but hopeless siege of Helm's Deep. This is a custom scenario made by Paladin Bob, an 8 player online battle and this video is really, really special because more than a year ago the legend Paladin Bob made his first custom scenario and it was the Siege of Helm's Deep. If you haven't seen it yet, there's a link down below. It's a pretty old video, but uh, it's definitely one of my more popular videos. So Paladin Bob, he's at it again, but it's only going to get better. He balanced this scenario a little bit better, so it's more fair for each team. Also, he added some heroes. So we got Theoden, Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, Gandalf, and I think there's some new Orc Generals. Also, if we look over this wall, look at this, guys. Look at this army. This is a massive force from Isengard. And the coolest thing about this army is that it's 10,000 strong, just like the movie. There's literally 10,000 troops on the battlefield. Now, unfortunately, we can't see the entire army. Some of them are hiding in the vegetation. I don't know how, don't ask me why. But uh, yeah, there's definitely more. So we'll see this army in action as this battle unravels before our eyes. Now, one of my favorite things about this new scenario is this unit right here. This is a mine, and this is not cosmetic. This actually functions. This blows up the wall, so I'm really excited to see that. And then, of course, over here, we have the Riders of the Riddermark, the reinforcements that will show up much later in this battle. Now, for the rules of this battle, we're going to go over the rules so you have a, a good understanding of how this is going to play out. If you don't care about rules and you just want to see action, you can skip ahead. There's a skip the battle button. Just click on that annotation and that will take you to the start of the battle. Now, for the rest of you guys, I want to let you know that this battle is a tiny bit scripted just so it plays out very similar to the movie. But overall, each player has plenty of space to make their own decisions and try to achieve victory in their own way. Now, looking at the first uh, couple rules here, we have Isengard. They can only move up half their army in the first 15 minutes. The only reason that that's a rule is because there's so many troops on the battlefield. They were they were afraid of it crashing, so only half the army can move up. Uh, the mine can only be activated in 10 minutes. Uh, the reason that that is a rule is so there's some pretty intense uh, wall battling going on, so it just looks really awesome. And then the final rule here is that the Rohirrim, they cannot show up. It's not a timer. It's more of a percentage thing. So they can't show up as reinforcements until 65% of the Isengard army has been destroyed. So uh, yeah, pretty cool rules right there. Let's uh, let's check out the uh, the players in the army comps. We're gonna go super fast here because I mean it's pretty obvious. I mean you guys know what they have. It's Urukai versus Men of Rohan and some elves and some Cav. But we will uh, just show the player names and go pretty fast here. So we have Rohan commanded by Sin of the Dark Cloud. He also has some troops in reserve as the uh, Cav reinforcement force. So he's got a lot of Helmingas, he has uh, the Swordsman, and I think he also has some Royal Guard. Here's some Militia, and let me show you the Royal Guard. Yeah, here's the Dismounted Royal Guard, and then here's King Theoden, ready to ride out one last time. And we also have a Catapult. I also want to mention about this Catapult that, yes, there was no Catapult in Helm's Deep, but this unit is only here for balancing, just to make the defenders have a chance against 10,000 Urukai. Moving on to the next players here, we've got uh, Happy Meal, who has uh, men from Rohan. He's also commanding some Sylvan Elves here. He's got some Sylvan Heavy uh, Swordsmen. And, uh, I mean, that. And of course, he's got some of the reinforcement cab back there. And then moving on to the next army, we have Glowbox. And he's bringing, like, a lot of peasants. This is, like, the children that they armed to try to defend this city. So lots of peasant axemen and cheaper units uh, spread, spread around the, the battlefield. And uh, we have Vampiric Khan. He is uh, commanding uh, the Cav reinforcement force, and he's got some troops inside the city of Helm's or the the fortress of Helm's Deep. He's commanding uh, Aragorn here. That's the uh, the general. That's why he's the free peoples of Eriador, uh, only because the only way you can use Aragorn is by using this faction. So he's got uh, some Dunedain bodyguard, don't question it. And he's also got some peasant archers and peasants over here. And then we got another uh, player here, he is the Dwarven faction. And again, he's only the Dwarves so he can get Gimli. And we do have some extra Dwarves here. Again, that's the only way you can use Gimli. So we got some Dwarven noblemen and some peasant uh, axemen. His name is Capone. 
363. So I'm pretty sure that's it for all the defenders. A lot of defenders. And uh, here's the rest of their cav force. Which I think it's cool that they're all commanding a little bit of the cav reinforcement force. Uh, so let's move on to the Isengard armies. There's three Isengard players. We have Genie at work. Most of their forces are consisting of Urukai infantry and raiders and crossbows. Now they don't have a ton of pikemen. I think they did that for balancing purposes once again. They don't want to spam those pikes. And uh, I think they also have Berserkers. The next player is Paladin Bob. He has a very similar army somewhere in the mix. I mean, they're all blended together. So Paladin Bob's army is located over here. Also, we have Higgins the Big Guns. So, very awesome name. He's got a very large, similar army. I mean, all the Isengard forces are pretty much the same. So that pretty much wraps it up for these army comps. Are you guys ready for this battle? Let's go ahead and begin and so it begins isengard moving forward he's got his men in loose formation he's got his ladders ready to go and the arrows are already coming down looks like there's a bit of a misclick here genie at work sending forward the mind you definitely don't want to lose that and uh, it's actually a pretty smart idea using fire arrows to try to light this thing uh, or try to blow it up but i don't think that's how it works i think the only way you can blow it up is with the berserkers here so it's definitely worth the shot though definitely worth the shot so uh isengard now marching pretty quickly here and the trick on taking these walls and really taking any wall in medieval 2 total war is trying to overwhelm the enemy trying to get as many ladders up there as possible now i don't know where exactly they're going to use the mine so they gotta kind of make space for that but he's got a massive force. Look at this. And they're all in loose formation, which is brilliant. You want to keep your tr your troops in loose formation so they don't get uh, gunned down by arrow fire. But he's getting closer and closer to the walls. Look at this fight. This is going to be such a cool... I'm just... I'm so excited for this. I don't know what it is about Lord of the Rings. These, like, historical battles. Especially the Siege of Helm's Deep. Oh, <laughs> their sieges are... Or not their sieges, but their shields are glitching out there. That's all right. I'm sure I'll uh, go back to normal once they get these ladders up on the walls. So they got two ladders ready to go. Looks like he's got another ladder down there. Uh, we've got elves and men standing together. One last time. Firing down. Look at this point of view from the elves. This would be terrifying. This would be so awful. Uh, we also have some peasant bowmen firing down. So they're trying to get as many kills as possible before they actually get to the walls. And I appreciate that the defenders are actually going to try to defend against these ladders. And here we go, guys. The ladders are set. And the Urukai are now marching up the ladder. Or climbing up the ladders. Whatever. You know what I meant. There they go. And we've got some brave men ready to hold. Uh, we've got some axemen and some sylvan heavy archers who will not run off the walls just yet. You can see he is retreating some forces, some archers to fall back and get ready for a, another position. And uh, we have the sylvan heavy swordsmen also ready to go. More infantry pushing forward. Here comes the Urukai climbing up the ladders and the siege has officially begun. The infantry are now doing battle. The swords militia going at it. Oh, sorry guys, just trying to get a good close up here. The fight for the walls have begun. And I feel like it's going to be a long, bloody fight for these walls. Such a very important part of the defense. You don't want to lose them so quickly. You can see the moon in the background there. It looks really cool. And it just seems like Isengard is just cutting through this defense like a hot knife through butter. Doesn't look like uh, Rohan is really holding their ground too well. Alright, more and more forces. Look at this! This is so cool! Look at this! This is awesome! This is so awesome looking. Just seeing all these Urukai climb up these, these ladders at once. Just overwhelming the defenders. We got arrows flying right overhead. Exactly like the movie. It's so awesome. And then, of course, we have the archers on the, uh, the secondary line here. Secondary defense firing down. Oh, man. They've got... They've, oh, we got the catapult now firing. So this is a really good point of view of the fight here. Get a nice close-up of the struggle. Uh, if I was in this battle, I'd definitely want to be one of these guys up here. I would not want to be fighting for these walls. 
Uh, we can see we got the elves over here. I believe this is Legolas. Yep, there's Legolas right there. You can see his, uh, his unit right here doing well, fighting to the death. Alright, so more and more forces coming forward. And just a, a full-on fight over here. So we're, I'm going to really try to try to do my best to capture all the cinematics of this battle. I know there's going to be a lot going on. Oh, Isengard's really clumping up here. They're, they're getting a foothold here against these elves, slowly pushing back these Sylvan Heavy uh, Swordsmen. Uh, I guess what what what's going on here? What is this? What is this crazy magic that? Oh, is, is this all you can conjure, Saruman? Floating? Oh, there they go. Okay, yeah, it's a little glitchy here, guys. I mean, that's to be expected. It's a mod, you know. It's not going to be perfect. Uh, but they are they are slowly cutting down the infantry. We do have some reserves charging forward, and you can see the archers. Sorry, guys. Archers are trying to focus down the flanks. This is a really good see I call this shooting fish in a barrel when you in medieval 2 have the enemy infantry stuck in one area and their flanks are exposed It's always a great idea to have archers back here and to fire down and to just to destroy that infantry Look at this just relentless amounts of Urukai never-ending stream more arrows coming down in the background and Rohan is really losing their defense here. They're losing their ground on this long wall. More arrows from the elves coming right overhead. Hitting hitting the Urukai as they get ready for the next wave. And if we look over here, the, the great ram is ready to knock down the, uh, the gate here. Actually, they're just kind of standing in place. Some arrows coming down. We have the Dunlading veterans. The evil men who... Just want to see the world burn, I suppose. So I guess they're not quite... Maybe they're doing a timing thing here, but they're not quite ready to take these walls. The air, the uh, fire arrows continue to come down. So let's uh, let's head back over to this main this main wall battle. This is where most of the fighting is uh, taking place. If we look at the percentage kill, 11%. So we got quite a bit more uh, percentage to kill before the uh, Rohirrim show up. Just a nasty, brutal front line, fighting shoulder to shoulder. Men and elves. Oh, we got more, uh, more glitches here. I guess. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I think it's. I think this ladder is glitching out a little bit. The ladders are gonna be glitchy, guys. But you know that's okay. Isengard is doing all right. They're doing perfectly fine. They've got. They're. In, they're really taking control of this side of the wall. I mean, the Rohirrim. They're. They're down to, let's see, the Axemen, they're down to 11 men holding back this horde of Urukai. This deadly elite infantry. And uh, the poor defenders are fighting back to back. And now we got Berserkers joining this wall battle. Berserkers are so good at cleaning up wall defenses. You can see them just spinning their, their great two-handed weapons there. Just cutting men in half. Which is so devastating. All right, what do we got here? Oh, we got the mine. The mine is in place. Let me let me go ahead and show you that. All right, so let's move over here. Are they lighting it? Not yet, but this is the wall they're going to blow up, which is pretty smart because obviously most of their infantry is located this way. Uh, do they have infantry ready to storm in? I'm not too sure. Oh, here we go, guys. Look at this. Look at this. Here we go. They're about to blow it up. This is so cool. I'm 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 freaking out like a. I don't know, like like a freak, <laughs> like a nerd. All right, I'm just amazed that Paladin Bob was able to pull this off to be able to use a mine in this situation. Let's see, are they gonna go? I mean, their swords are freaking. Oh, there they go. They're getting ready. Get ready. Here we go. Here we go. Blow it up. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's it's got to take a couple tries. A couple tries here. Uh, I just hope it doesn't crash. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> there he goes. Um. So this is straight. This is okay. So it is a mod, and we're gonna see some strange stuff. The wall doesn't blow up instantly; it like slowly crumbles down. So you'll see. Yep, there it goes. I, I, I 
regardless of how it blows up, I think that was amazing. That was so cool. And now the wall is crumbling down, and pretty soon we're gonna have infantry just storming through this uh, this opening here. There, there, there they go. There they go. Smoke all over the bat, uh, or dust, I should say, all over the battlefield here. And they're charging in before the wall is even fully destroyed. And look at the horde of Ur Urukai coming on in. And now we have the ax, uh, the yeah, the axeman going to try to bl uh, clog up this this opening here, trying to buy time for the archers to fire down, get some good kills. And this is not good. Uh, the walls have been have been defeated, and now the forces of Isengard are pouring through. The floodgates have opened. And Isengard's going to try to take this one. I love the flashing of lightning. You can see the battle just a little bit better for a couple seconds. Or not even a couple seconds, for a half a second. Oh, look at just the arrows just whizzing by. I love it. I mean, they've got archers all over the place. And the elves, this is a really good spot. And notice that he formed a shield wall over here with a peasant axeman. So these axemen are not going to win uh, by any means. But they're definitely going to hold back these forces just for a little longer to get some archer fire, catapult fire, to fire down on all of these forces. Oh, there we go. There we go. Some nice, nice hits there from the catapult. More arrow support coming down. Looks like the elves are now fighting in melee. These are archers who are holding back some berserkers. And if we head back over to this main fight here, this is all. I just love the fact that you can see the moon in the background here. We've got some axemen and militia holding back the horde of Urukai. And there's got to be thousands in this one area, or at least hundreds. Oh, and the catapult! The ca yes! The catapult getting good hits, really good hits, taking out at least a hundred there in that one volley. That is excellent. One shot there. And if we look at the percentage killed, now 23%. They, get, they better hurry up and start killing to get those uh, Rohirrim reinforcements. But this is a really good kill zone. Let's see what's going on on the other side where you can see the gate has been destroyed. And now the forces are charging in. Uh, I That really caught me by surprise. I mean, they were just sitting there with that ram. I wasn't really expecting them to... I mean, we saw the gate open. Uh, but yeah, they're pushing on multiple fronts now. And uh, you can see, I don't know what's going on here. I guess Rohan, the sin of, sin of the Dark Cloud, he's just kind of forming a, a box here. I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to get the enemy to just pour on in. Oh, wait, there he goes. He's charging in. Never mind. Never mind. Just forget what I was saying. But I think he was trying to create space so more enemy forces can pour in and the catapult can, and archers can fire down in this huge blob. This is another excellent kill zone. He's got some uh, swordsmen now closing in. They're all closing in. And a massive, massive battle right here. Uh, just a bloody push to try to take these gates. Holding back the enemy. So they haven't lost too much ground yet. And just look at that. That is so, that is so cool. Just seeing that huge army over there. The archers firing from up, a, up, up above. Trying to support the brave men who are fighting down here. Looks like the horde of Ur Urukai are slowly but surely cutting down this thin line of elves and men. And they're going to completely lose this section of the uh, the siege. Alright, so Isengard is at 30%. Almost halfway there until the Rohirrim can show up. Walking down the steps there. Regrouping. Now they're going to push. What's, le what's left of the uh, peasant axemen. I mean, brave peasants here. See, they're down to 10 men as they take on berserkers. They, don't, they do not stand a chance. And now the defenders who were trying to hold back this, uh, this opening are now getting surrounded by the uh, the troops who are coming down from the walls. Yeah, they they have to fight back to back now as they're taking on so many Urukai.
more infantry pouring in. And these are actually crossbows. Oh wait, no, they're falling back. <laughs> Getting a little too, a little too anxious there. Like, oh, we'll go back. You guys aren't ready yet. Oh, we thought you butchered the enemy. Hey, we'll give you a couple more minutes. <laughs> All right. So the defenders who are fighting their hearts out have almost been destroyed here and soon this massive force of Urukai are going to push to the next choke point which is lo located right here you can see that there's small group or small troops here fighting I think Isengard's trying to take out that catapult which is going to be huge if Rohan loses that catapult it might as well be game over oh my god look at the point of view of the Rohirrim Look at that horde back there. That is awful. And they still have, look at this. They still have tons of reserves over here. So this is, this is going to be rough, guys. This is going to be really tough for them. Uh, this is nice positioning here with the archers. They're now focusing over at the gate. And it's a little tricky to see because of the shadow here, but it's, it's pretty dark. Uh, but a lot of defenders still holding them back. But it, it looks like Isengard is pushing them back. They're slowly taking control of this gate. But you gotta love the uh, the arrow support there. I'm sure they're getting tons of kills. Here's Legolas. Legolas now moving into into a better position. And I think he's got some yeah he's got some pikemen moving forward as well. Love seeing those pikes. I mean, what battle of Helm's Deep? I mean, you can't have a battle of Helm's Deep without pikemen. You just can't. So I think the pikes are gonna be really useful at taking out these defenses because they're just so good at taking out choke point defenses oh oh you see that over there in the background we got a catapult set up and just look at the relentless amount of arrows coming down let me go ahead and show you this catapult here Aragorn he's uh, he's still alive Come on, catapult get some good hits do it for your people Gimli's now falling back. <laughs> the heroes don't want to die just yet. Oh, wait. There goes Aragorn. Aragorn is charging in. Yeah, it sucks that he's on horseback, but not much you can do about that. Yeah, so he's coming over here to help defend the gate just like the movie, but he's just doing it in a different way. But the defenses over here, they're also thinning. Uh, they're doing all right right here. You can see a lot of a lot of troops in this one area, but over here they are just down to like a single single line of troops. Here comes the pikemen. You can see their pikes going through the gate. Let's head over to the other side of the battle. Let's see what's going on here. We got more Isengard forces just just fighting, biting, cr cr uh, clawing their way through this defense to, tra to try to take this hill here. And that's exactly what they're doing. I mean, this just seems so hopeless. It just seems like there's nothing they can do. Oh, and now the crossbows, the crossbows are just getting, so where are they? They're on the walls. Excellent, excellent job here from the attackers, setting up his crossbows on the walls. They're gonna be able to get a ton of good hits there. Oh, yes. Yes, the catapult. I heard that from a mile away. The burning of orcs. I, I just love that sound. So uh, the catapult getting some great hits. And every time the light the lightning flashes, you can see this battlefield a little bit better. This area a little bit better. Oh, or when yes, excellent. That's gonna break a lot of spirits there. The Urukai are going to break from that. And the arrows continue to do a great job. Uh, but I think Rohan's going to have to fall back. Uh, they're going to be... Yeah, their flank is going to be exposed here. The dismounted Royal Guard, you don't want to lose them early on. So he needs to try to get them back. Defend this area over here. So remember, 65% until Gandalf shows up. 
All right, we got a thin line of Sylvan Heavy uh, archers holding back the Urukai pikemen. There we go. This is a much better angle. Much better angle. So they're also falling back. So this is like red alert for the defenders. They really have no other place to go. They're going to fall back to their final uh, defense here. Use the support of the catapult to hopefully hold on. And look at the shield wall from the dismounted royal guard. That is awesome. So he's got like two units here forming shield wall. And this is it. All they've been fighting for right here, right now. Uh, meanwhile, Isengard is getting destroyed by Ince. Alright, so let's kind of fly around here, see what they got for reserves. I mean, they've got tons of troops. Uh, and, uh, let's see, they've got they've got a, a decent force for the, uh, the cab to kind of chew on here. Uh, some pikemen, some infantry. It's going to be an issue for those the, the Rohirrim, but we'll see what happens here. Uh, but let's head back over to this main fight, because this is obviously where most of the action is. And, we, well, I'm just checking that percentage, because I know it's 65% those uh, Rohirrim are going to show up. So, for the defenders to win this situation, they've got to rely, obviously, on the reinforcements. And it's so vital that they keep that catapult firing and the archers. you got to try to use your ammo wisely. Try to go after huge clumps, huge groupings of enemy forces. What are they fighting over here, though? Just looks like they're trying to clear, clear up any uh, defending forces here before they move forward. But they just got to keep pushing. The time is against them. Uh, literally, they've got an hour to take this this great uh, fortress. And again, the, the archers up here just doing an excellent job firing down in that position. Trying to kill as many as possible. Uh, he's got more archers over here. Uh, Isengard should definitely try to take this area. They should try to send up here and try to take them out. Another great hit from the catapult. You can see the aftermath right here. The burning Urukai. And these guys are continuing continuing to hold on. Oh, 52%, guys. 52%. Getting so close for the Rohirrim. They just got to kill a couple more troops to get it to 65. Oh, another good. Oh, my God. He burned a ton there. Oh, oh, the Royal Guard, they're breaking their formation. That might have been a misclick, but uh, it doesn't look like he's going to get punished for that. He's going to reform, and Isengard's not going to be able to move in quick enough. Uh, he might be trying to fall back because he's trying because the catapult's getting a little too close to his troops. Let's see what happens. The catapult's focusing down this way. Oh, yes! Excellent, excellent. Oh, I mean, these are some juicy targets right here. 54% now. About 10 more percent. Hold, brave men of Rohan. Here comes another shot right here from the catapults. Yes, another. Oh, yes. It's getting a ridiculous amount of kills. Remember, there's 10,000 Urukai. So there's plenty of kills to go around. And I love this very organized formation from the Rohirrim. The Sylvan Heavy Archers, looks like they're holding their fire. Nope, nope, they're going to fire here. I mean, there's just an ocean of black that they have to take on. Oh, 56%. The, arch the archers are firing down. And they're actually firing at the walls here. So Isengard finally moving in some troops to try to clear up these walls. They should have done this a long time ago. But they're going to try to take out the Helmingas, the archers of Rohan. And uh, hopefully save some of their own men there. So it's a decent small force here of, uh, of Isengard trying to take them out. And uh, 
Oh, oh, what's going on here? You can see Isengard getting a loose formation. Scouts have reported of the Rohirrim, I guess. I don't know. They're they're already forming a defensive line here, which is, I don't know what's going on there, but whatever. Uh, let's see. 58%. Uh, so we'll, we'll head back over to that direction once the Cavs starts charging in. At, at dawn, look... At dawn, look east. <laughs> so, Legolas is up here with his fellow elves firing down at the, uh, the forces of Isengard. These raiders here. And they're just getting obliterated. There's no way. They, they need to send up more support to try to take out these archers. They're shaken. They're tired. And they are wavering. They're going to go ahead and fall back. They're not going to make it. And this great battle right here is still underway. And for Isengard to win, I think when the Rohirrim show up, it's going to be really tough for them to kill everyone. Oh, jeez. Another hit there. Oh, that is just brutal. But for them to win, I think they just have to capture the town center. There's no way they're going to be able to kill every single uh, Rohirrim defender here. 61%, guys. It's so close for those Ro Rohirrim to show up. Oh, yes. Right there, it looks like Isengard. Oh, we got some breakage here from Isengard. The catapult being the saving grace in this. They need to send up more forces. But again, if they send... Oh, some friendly fire there. If they send up too much, they'll just get obliterated from that catapult. Just constantly looking at the percentage. 63%. Oh, another great hit. That might be enough percentage. No, not yet. Oh, there we go. What is this? Gandalf. And here is the first charge into Isengard's forces. And you can see in the background, the rest of the Rohirrim are showing up, ready to run down what's left of this army. Oh my god. Yeah, not, not a pretty sight here for Isengard. Here comes another center charge into their forces. Here to save the day, guys. And that balance of power, it's looking pretty even. 69% of uh, Isengard's forces have been obliterated. <laughs> There's Gandalf. There he is. He's going in, guys. Using his special ability. The White Wizard. So we kind of get a bird's eye view of just a calf going ham. Look at this, they're just so relentless, just running down, looking for every opportunity to just create enough space and just charge down the enemy forces. And they are just crushing Isengard right now. They definitely need some pikes over here to try to support them in this cab battle. It's not looking great for the Isengard forces who are stuck down here. We do have some infantry charging back down, trying to reinforce, re, uh, trying to reinforce the, uh, the, the troops out here. There they go, there they go. They should do some damage against the Rittermark skirmishers here. And now the horsemen, uh, they're going to try to support this location. We got pike. 
Look at this. We got pikemen. All the pikemen are out here defending this uh, this choke point here, trying to prevent the cap from coming in. So the horse archers are going to try to skirmish them down a little bit. If we head back over to this main fight, uh, wow, Rohan, Rohan is kicking some butt here. More Isengard forces coming forward. They need to send up more infantry. They need a miracle here. It seems like the battle has turned. They have turned. It's turned very quickly. The Royal Guard, Royal Guard making their last stand. Aragorn is charging out. Ride one more, one last time. The archers from the secondary, or third layer of defense. Uh, just killing what's left of this Isengard army. What's left fighting over here. Uh, what's going on at the gate? We got pikemen protecting the gate. Trying to protect the flanks of his main infantry that's storming up the center position. Let's head back out, see what the cap, look at the cap. Just look at all of them, all over the place. Uh, let's see, Isengard is, what is this, more cap? Where does the cap go, where did they go? <laughs> they, all right, so he's got cap, uh, just a horde of cap, blow box charging them in. Uh, so I think he's just looking for enemies. He's looking for a lot of enemies here. Yeah, I think they just killed everyone out here. I think that's it. So now they're just charging into pikes. That's all they can do. Cleaning out the enemy forces. Look at that. They don't even care. They don't even care if they're pikemen. They're going in. Just keep, yeah, just keep pouring in. Do it. And the forces of Isengard are just amazed by the turn of events. They should have never, well... I was gonna say they should have never underestimated Ro Rohan, but you, they really didn't. They had 10,000 Urukai and a mine, explosives, to knock down that wall. We got the general of Isengard. He's in the fight. You can see his banner right here. You know it's a, a desperate situation for Isengard when the general is now in the front lines. And the royal guard are just too much. Too much for this for this assault here. Legolas is in the front line fighting. We got Rohirrim charging through the gate. They're they're kind of freaking out a little bit. They're going a little little uh, glitchy there. That's all right. Looks cool. They're surrounding the pikemen who are trying to defend the flank, but there's really no more, uh, there's no more to defend over here. The infantry is almost dead. The Rohirrim are so close to breaking through these pikemen. I'm sure they lost a lot of cav here, but they're stubborn, these pikemen. They won't admit when, they won't admit defeat, they just... They don't care if they're gonna lose. They're gonna stand their ground. Pikey, pikey, pokey, pokey against these uh, Rohirrim. There is a gap here. You can see he's forming up. He's probably gonna try to get behind the pikemen. Uh, he's still, wow, still a lot of, look at all the, the crossbow fire coming in. So he still has a lot of crossbow fire. Here comes the, uh, the death, death flank here, maneuvering around. He's got to get some infantry to try to cut down these archers. Oh wait, no, actually, no, that's horse archers. I'm sorry. The horse archers, that's all. I mean, the crossbows are firing too. Oh, there goes one of the generals. Yeah, that's not good. They're going to lose a lot of morale there. And I have a feeling that we are near the end of this epic struggle. Oh, there goes another general. Uh, they just have one more general on Isengard's side. The forces are charging down. They're now doing the counter assault here. The counter charge. And I think they're down to just some crossbows. This is what's left of the army. And they're gonna fall back defeated. And they're not gonna be able to go home because Isengard was destroyed.
Yep. Just all crossbows up here. So now they just have to wait for infantry. We already have uh, some militia charging in. Charging up the walls, taking on the, the crossbows. Look at all the arrows coming overhead. That's great. Oh, sorry guys. Yeah, the crossbows are breaking here. They just glitched out so they won't fall back. And I think that's it, guys. That's gonna wrap it up. That was, uh, that was intense. That was insane. Uh, not exactly a close battle. Uh, Isengard was doing all right until that cat. I think the catapult was, was a bit much. I don't know. See, they kind of needed the catapult because there's 10,000 Urukai, but uh, I don't. You know, they might have had a chance of winning without the catapult. Uh, so I think it was an excellent fight. Maybe try it without the catapult, see what happens. Uh, but I think they're just, yeah, they're just cutting down. So we'll just go ahead and fast forward here. Uh, most of the forces are falling back. You can see most of the cab just standing still because there's really nothing left to kill. And Isengard's making their, yeah, look at him. Flee! Flee! Retreat! Run them down, run them down, cavalry. All right, so here is the end results, guys. Look at this, King Theoden getting 3,671 kills, and then Legolas coming in second with 2,393, and then Gandalf getting 300, let's see, Aragorn 900, Gimli 700, and at the very end, Lurtz, even though he was dead at the time of this, got a thousand kills. Uh, so thank you, Pilot and Bob, so much, man, for these custom scenarios. You work really hard on them, and they're just so much fun. They're so entertaining. Also, I want to give a, a thank you to all the players who are fighting in this custom scenario. And let's look at the results here of King Theoden's army. And let me just show you who got the most kills. Look at this. A thousand eighty-four. That's like ten percent of the uh, enemy forces there killed. That is insane. And then we got 557 by some Helmingas. The archers just racking up kills. So uh, yeah, that wraps up today's battle. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was definitely very, uh, very, very fun. And uh, I'll catch you guys around next time. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, a comment, share, and of course, subscribe if you haven't. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.